And especially, it, it makes me even more frustrated with cancers that have such a poor success rate by their own admission. Let's say you have pancreatic cancer with a 7% five-year success rate. Goodness sakes, why are you still doing harsh, harsh chemo on pancreatic cancer when you have a 7% five-year success rate? Okay, by any stretch of the imagination, that that sucks. I hate to say that, that's... You know, but it's just, it's horrible. Um, why aren't you telling people to, hey, why don't you try diet? Why don't you try, you know, um, different nutraceuticals? Maybe we couple them together and would we get a better success rate? Um, uh, it's, it's, to me, that's, to me, that, that is malpractice. That's not just sad anymore. Um, but that is criminal when you are talking people out of, doing other things that could improve their odds or at least improve um, their health so that they have less side effects doing the chemotherapy that you're advocating. But no, you we, we all, all the time we hear oncologists that tell patients, oh, don't do anything else while we're doing chemotherapy. We don't want anything to interrupt the success of our chemotherapy. Oh, let's look at your success rate of chemotherapy. It's horrible for certain types of cancers. And then you're telling people not to try to mitigate the side effects of of the chemotherapy, except by using your anti-nausea drugs and some uh, steroids to help decrease inflammation. That to me is, that to me is not being a doctor anymore. You're not really caring for the patient anymore, thinking of their best um, in, in the circumstances. You're just like, following a protocol that a pharmaceutical company has written. Um, and uh, it's, that's, it's really sad. Yeah. Yeah, man. There's a, there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, as I've been researching more of trying to expand into some alternative treatments to see what else is out there before, besides just the conventional treatments, I, I did come across some of the therapies you mentioned, like the Hoxie therapy. I'm reading his autobiography and it's just, if, if there's any truth to this autobiography, it's incredible because the amount of pushback that he got from mainstream and the federal government just trying to close the doors on his 17 clinics that uh, by many accounts were having some success with his herbal treatments and tonics and things like that. I mean, it, it reminds me of some of the stuff that's going that's been going on with COVID in the past two years where People want to try alternative treatments, but our, our government is just so opposed to people having the autonomy to try things for themselves and see what they want to use. It's almost like a, uh, you used to have the theocratic state where you could only practice one religion. Now we have the pharmaceutical state and, and you have to practice the, the dogmatic pharmaceutical religion that they, that they deem appropriate. I don't know. Does, well, does uh, you said it best. Does it I think like it really too? does get it. It really it's uh, it is a religious thing almost because it is literally you're following the pharmaceutical gods um, that are out there in nowhere land, and you're following the protocol. I I had a patient once. This is kind of a funny story, and if the patient listens to this, I hope I don't botch the story too bad. But this person um, was 